The stuff that you'll need are as follows. You'll need three spark plugs. So this says four, but you actually need three because it's a three cylinder. So I have three in here. And the part that I have is NGK95983. This is the step up above the copper. It was like, I think it was cheaper too. These are the platinum ones. I think there's two above this. There's like iridium and laser iridium or something and they should all perform similarly it's just that the cheaper ones you have to replace them more often to remove the bolts you'll need a 10 millimeter socket which is this one and then we have a 3 8 inch manual ratchet i also prefer the 3 8 inch electric or battery powered one it makes things easier so we'll put those aside there's also this hose i don't know if you can see it but this hose right here i'll show you guys later too this hose is blocking one of the bolts so i used an extension, a 3 8 inch extension for this 10 millimeter socket. Um, you can also use a 10 millimeter wrench in order to get to that location because it's kind of tight. And then in order to get the spark plugs out, you'll need this 5 8 inch spark plug remover. So it's pretty much just a 5 8 inch uh, socket, but it has this rubber inside. That way you can grip onto the spark plug and you can pull it out easily and then you also need this extension that way when this is inside the hole you'll need something to be able to turn it i think this one's around two inches long so if this isn't long enough i can also use this, ex this extension to make this longer so let's begin from the back we'll just hit the unlock twice press this button right here this opens there's two tabs, one right here, one right here, that will push. And then this whole thing just comes down. Then looking over here, we have this mat that we have to lift up. So this just comes up. There's this clip that holds this entire mat in place. So we'll just latch that on like that. There's also this piece in the middle that we have to move. So we'll flick it up and turn it counterclockwise to loosen it. And then this whole Thing just comes out and then we can see the engine. This is for reference of where these spark plugs are. So I'm just gonna go in here, brighten this up, and then we'll see these three coil packs. So there's one right there, one right there, and one right there. And then you see these screws. This was that hose that I was talking about. If you just put a regular 10 millimeter socket, this hose and that metal piece is blocking the way. I carefully used an extension. It actually didn't bite all six corners. It bit like three, and I was able to, to loosen it. If you don't feel comfortable doing that, you can also use this 10 millimeter wrench to loosen that up. So you can actually use this for all of them, but I just prefer the electric ratchet um, because it's faster. These are the other two screws that I'll need to remove as well. I'm gonna start from the right side and work my way to the left. This is the one that you have to do very carefully. Otherwise, you'll strip the thread. If you want, you can also unclip these boots. Just make sure you know where they go. So right now I have some oil. That means my valve cover is probably leaking. I gotta replace that too. Stick this down.
my valve cover gasket is leaking. That's why you saw all of that oil on the spark plugs. I'll need to change that, but for the sake of this video, I'm going to put the new plugs in and then just clean them off after. The old plugs are on the left, the new plugs are on the right. They should be pre-gapped to a specified um, gap tolerance. I am not going to check them because I trust them okay. And also, I don't really care about this car too much. You can also use these feeler gauges to make sure that the gap is the right tolerance. You'll measure it and then stick them in there. If they're too tight, this will push them open. And if they're too loose, you just push that against some surface and they will tighten them. You can also use anti-seize. It's this copper looking paste that you'll apply on the threads. That way this doesn't bind or seize with the engine. Since I replace spark plugs every 30,000 miles or so, or every few years, I don't really care about that. I never had an issue with it seizing, but if you're paranoid, you can put that stuff on. I feel like it's mainly for cars with the spark plugs that you leave on for 100,000 miles or you don't change for a lot of years or cars that get really hot and the metal might bind together. That might be an issue. So I'm gonna put these new plugs in. I'm going to drop these in. One. Two, three. I'm going to use this. I'm just going to tighten them by hand for now. Alright, so this one is hand tight. I like to use the manual ratchet, that way I don't over tighten it. On the instructions, it says to do, to tighten it 1 16th of a turn. So if you had like a clock, that would be like one o'clock and then you would go to six o'clock. This is our one o'clock and then our six o'clock. I'm going to turn this here to over there. So I didn't have space, but there we go. So that's tight. Moving on to the next one, we'll tighten it by hand. Just made it snug with the manual ratchet. We're gonna do that 1 16th to tighten it, then the half turn to tighten it. All right, so that feels tight. On to the last one. Make sure it's snug. That 1 16th turn there. I don't have space to do a whole 180 degrees. I'm just going to do two uh, 90 degrees. So that's one and two. All right, so we're good. Last, we're going to put these boots back in. the screw back on. Just want to tighten all these up by hand. You don't have to tighten them too much, probably to like eight foot pounds. Lastly, you start the car, make sure there's no check engine light. And then you can drive around to make sure it runs smoothly. As you guys can see, there's that flashing wrenches right there. 
I'm going to try to reset the light. So I, I'm putting the key in, turning it on, pressing this twice, turning this off, pressing, holding this, and then turning this on. And then it goes back to 10,000 miles, holding it, release. And when I saw that number change, I released it, turning this back off. And then if I start the car again, that light should be gone.